So they, my daughter Swazik did that for you. I love it. <laughs> That's so cute, man. It's so sweet. Johnny Depp, you're one of the guests of honour at this year's Deauville Film Festival. Tell us about your relationship with France. I think my relationship with France became uh, uh, um, apparent in my youth when I read a book called A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. Uh, and I remember reading that book and thinking, well, that's it. That's what I want. That's that's the life that I want. You know? When I first went to Europe, 89, I think, was Crybaby. Finished Crybaby, got on a plane and came to France because I wanted to see, you know. And it was the first time I instantly felt um, home. I guess my relationship got so intense that uh, I came here to do a film with Polanski for six months and uh, ended up meeting Vanessa um, and having children and living here for 10 years. So France is, uh, will always be my home, you know. And despite perhaps public opinion in other places, France has always loved you back as well. Why do you think France is different to maybe Hollywood, for example? <laughs> Hollywood? <laughs> um, there's no, uh, there's just no comparison. The appreciation for, and I'll use the term cinema, there's a great difference now uh, <clears throat> between what's considered film cinema and movies. Um, Hollywood seems to make movies that are continually, constantly, endlessly, boringly fractured and, and formulaic stories. Here, anything's possible. Hey, yo, big, big, big. The rap world's biggest star was murdered last night. My son was shot. Why? 20 years ago, you were the lead detective on the Big Small case, right? Depp's character is based on the late LAPD detective Russell Paul and his efforts to get to the bottom of the 1997 murder of the rapper Christopher Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G. A couple brothers get shot, and nobody gives a damn, do they? All my shooters in planning on moving weight. The unsolved murder of two young men. You have any suspects? Ain't no name dropping. Say my name, assassinating. As long as it's an ongoing investigation. Some evidence stays locked away in the dark. And we're here with a film that isn't formulaic the two um, at all, the, the City of Lies, mm -hmm. and it's showing in Deauville. It was filmed a little while ago. Why has it taken so long to come out? Uh, Hollywood. <laughs> 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 That's really the answer. The politics of, of Hollywood are, are a very complicated thing, though based in elementary, you know, elementary school uh, um, retaliatory tactics. I don't think there was any accident that the film was sort of, well, what? I would say suppressed, for sure. Suppressed, taken out of our possession. And is that because of the criticism, do you think, of the LAPD? Net? I think there was a lot of elements, unfunctionally. It was the Los Angeles Police Department and you know, the broader landscape of that it was the struggle of the two distributors, um, the struggle of some of the perceptions of things that he's alluding to. You know, I'm, I'm proud, very proud to be here and very proud to always stand by Johnny and, and to share the movie with the world. When the film was sitting in limbo, the real, the real damage about, about that is Ms. Wallace, you know, Valletta Wallace, Biggie's mom, um, who's this very wise, beautiful, very philosophical and wise, you know. This, this mother deserves uh, answers. And this film contains all of the, everything that leads up, everything that adds up to the answer for her. This film is for her, I believe, hopefully one step closer 
in getting some relief uh, from what she's uh, had to experience for all these these long years. So to hold it and not release it for this reason or that reason, it causes a problem for Miss Wallace. I believe that Miss Wallace deserves to have the truth be known, and she deserves some some uh, some justice, for some sure. justice, and some uh, attention for her plight. Um, and this is an American film festival. I wanted to ask both of you: Do you feel patriotic to your country? Patriotic is a strange word because it can be taken anywhere. It can be taken to a great extreme, which we've seen with, like, you know, some. <laughs> some half-naked dude with bongos and like Viking helmet, you know, <laughs> entering the Capitol building. That is, uh, that is the newest definition of patriotic. Well, I wouldn't. I don't really want to go to. I don't want to go anywhere with that guy. <laughs> any there's, of those people. <laughs> there's a creed. There's a creed. The the oath Russell pulls creed in the movie that speaks to, you know sort of blindly being able to serve justice and do your job without looking at race, religion, um, or person's creed, just looking at them as human beings. So I think when it comes to your question, uh, and I, I appreciate this about the inspiration that Johnny's offered and the plight that we took, um, you know, we're very honored to be here and it, it, we're full of a room of human beings regardless of where you're from. So. Uh, I think, you know, as that's, that, that's really what it's about, you know. Uh, this is a mother who lost a son. That's something that's human. It's not about patriotism or your country or any of these things. We're just honored to share it with people around the world it's because we think the story has a gravitas that speaks deeper to not only um, this mother losing their son, but as we're seeing this tremendous movement with, you know, Black Lives Mattering, and which have always... Um, and Biggie being one of the most influential black figures in the world, and um, you know his life being lost uh, due to you know a systematic oppression and due to corruption within the institutions. These are larger themes that, that, that there's no patriotism doesn't exist when we discuss those type of themes. And that figure in the closing credits: um, more than 50% of African American murders are unsolved. After researching this film, after making this film, what needs to happen to change that figure? In a, in a police department, especially like, you know, for, for example, the Los Angeles Police Department, back when there were the, the Rodney King um, tape um, inspired people to take to the streets. And, and, and taking to the streets you had people who were out there for justice and justice when you're impassioned, justice and revenge, they interlock. You could have 90%, 99% good cops or good, or good whatever. Um, there's always going to be some vein of, uh, of of corruption, there's going to be some vein, some some uh, vein that makes it through underground, that uh, wholly and completely are based on money, with no care whatsoever for the situation, human lives, or anything. It's really all about dough. That's why this murder, in particular, and isn't solved and that's applicable across the board. One of the themes we kept constantly seeing, which was very impactful, is um, you know, different people coming to me and their communities saying that the stories of Christopher Wallace that they're now seeing in the movie are synonymous to stories of all different types of people on the streets. So you see it's pervasive in that nature. So I think probably the only way is to communicate and to attempt to be honest and uh, in the face of uh, you know, these things that go on and hopefully that will slowly create change. But it's, it, 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 it's probably quite silly to think that, you know, all of a sudden change is going to happen. These things are glacial. Johnny hit the nail on the head. Ultimately, that stuff's about money. Thank you, guys. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a thank pleasure you. to meet you. Thank, thank you so much. Who shot Biggie Smalls? It's a riddle.